Hi everyone, this is Raquel from Scrap Cozy. Today I'm going to show you how to create a binder. This video is just to create the base, which you see here, which has three rings and a pocket. On a separate video you will be able to see how I've decorated it with my new stamps and stencils that I've designed for Paper Artsy. And this is how they will fit all in, the stencils in the pocket and the stamps bound. Now let's start with the base. Here's what you need. Some pieces of grey cardstock, two same size for the cover and the front and one for the spine. You will need some tape, some wrapping paper in craft color, one bigger, one smaller and then that template which is the pocket and I've cut it that out of a piece of white cardstock. You have the templates for these in my blog so you can download the images and see exactly what are the measurements so you can do it yourself. Here I'm just trimming the excess, cutting through those lines and then on the dotted lines on a later stage I will fold those lines, mark them, score them to create my pocket. Now I'll move on to the base. I'm going to pick two pieces of great cardstock and use them as a division to make a separation between the spine and the cover. Then with some tape I'm making sure that I join them together. This will be my hinge and I will add several pieces of tape for more strength. Once I'm happy with enough layers I will just fold to test the hinge and I'll move on to the next step in the same way. Putting the two pieces there to make sure that these are separated in the same way and that they are in parallel and I will wrap all around with that tape several times. And with that I have my very basic base, which can now be closed and open. The next step is making sure that I strengthen though that more and that I create a uniform base. So with some Mod Podge and that wrapping paper, it's very curved so I'm just making sure that I wrap it the other way around, so now it's a bit more flat. And then with the Mod Podge and acting very fast because Mod Podge dries very quickly, I extend it on the first part of my cover and press it down against the paper. And now I can work on the other two parts. First the spine and then the next cover. Pressing down very well and working very fast because as I had say, Mod Podge dries very quickly. Once all is glue, I'm going to cut the corners. So I'm testing there what is the best distance that I can pick. So I'm just testing a distance and an angle that actually makes the paper to overlap. So I'm making sure in the other corners that I make like a wide angle so they will overlap. And then what I will be doing is applying some Mod Podge and gluing that part. I'm doing bottom and then top and then I'll move on to left and right. Now that one side is done, I'm going to finish that up with a smaller piece. So I'm just putting
putting some Mod Podge also on one of the sides and I'm making sure that I cover everything very well and I will stick my piece of paper. You can make it smaller than I did because as you can see I have a lot of gap there that the paper will overlap and here it was not very very uh, straight so I had to trim a little bit of it but that's okay. I'll continue applying Mod Podge to the rest and making sure that it dries completely flat. And once everything is glued down, you need to make sure that everything is actually dried before you start playing around with hinges, because at this point, if they are wet, they may break. But once everything is dry, this will be pretty sturdy. Now we are going to decorate the pocket. My initial idea was to use that punch by uh, Martha Stewart, but the paper was too thick because I'm using heavy cardstock by Paper Artsy. Since that was too, too thick, I decided to actually go and use some of those scissors that create borders and that worked fine. The next step is actually score the lines that are dotted. I used a friction pen, so you'll see that the lines disappear when I mark them. So basically I'm scoring all of them, and since the cardstock is so heavy, I will score them also on the other side. Then, when you start folding, it's a matter of pressing down with a lot of strength with the bone to make sure that the score lines are very marked. So you mark all of them. And this is how the pocket will be mounted. So the back is a bit outstanding so then it's easy to fit the stencils inside to put the rings I did some templates using a post-it note to see what was the best separation between holes and that should be the one so I'm going to use that post-it note to mark my lines and then to calculate the one in the middle, I will just use a ruler and place those there. And then I will poke the holes using a pokey tool. It takes a while, both of uh, time and strength, because the cardstock is very heavy and also you need to go through two more parts of paper. So just take your time and make the holes right. And I did it from one side and then from the other. So I made sure that I opened them with the same shape on both sides. And once that's done, I'm testing there my rings. And surprisingly, I don't know, I picked a separation that allows them to be completely stiff. They don't fall, which is great because then they will not move a lot. And this is how it looks like on the other side. So that's it. This is the base and this is how I'm planning to use it. Stencils on the pocket and stamps bound on the side. So what I do normally is I trim the plastic from both the stamps and the stencils and I keep that plastic pocket because it's easier to put them up and down and remove them. So watch the next video if you want to see how I decorated this. And I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.